Hello, you are watching This and That with me, Rachna. Formula 1 2022 season is officially underway and if you are someone like me, closely following it, words like space, pace, downforce, porpoising and definitely not the least data are widely used. Personally, I feel Ferrari has a well-rounded car this season and one thing that stands out which is stamped all over their car is AWS. If you look at Mercedes, you will see HP and Team Your, Red Bull has Oracle, Alpine has Azure and McLaren is with Dell Technologies. Now, how are these sponsors slash technology partners helping Formula One teams use data to harness and improve the performance right down to ideal pit stop times, tire selections that can help develop a strategic playbook for them and their drivers? Let us find out. If you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Nobody designs a car to come in second, which was rightly said by CTO of F1, Pat Simmons. F1 cars have been pushing the envelope not only on speed but on technology since many years. In early 1990s, they started with few sensors attached to these F1 cars which stored only a small amount of sensor data in memory built into the car's computer. Now, engineers could access this data after the race, but not during it. As technology progressed, cars gained the ability to send small amounts of data back to the pit lane while they were on track. Paving the way to this new era in motorsports which has become this huge IoT framework. Every F1 car in current times contains about 300 sensors which generate 1.1 million telemetry data points per second transmitted from the cars to pits. During each race weekend, roughly about 160 terabytes of data is sent between the remote race circuit and the F1 Media and Technology Center in England, UK. Get that, every race weekend. Now, what you do with that data has become that much more crucial as now you can get a complete digital picture of how the card was performing on track. I love this statement from Mercedes. Races are won at the track, championships are won at the factory. Which is very true as drivers are fighting for race wins on field, but engineering and data teams behind these drivers are trying to win a race of their own by developing best race strategy that could maximize their chances of achieving results. If you are using AWS, like Ferrari for example, your tech stack might look like this. You have AWS SageMaker, which is a cloud-based machine learning platform that was launched in November 2017. This enables developers and data scientists to create, train and deploy machine learning models, those neural networks in the cloud. They are training deep learning models with about 65 to 70 years of historical race data. A key step to make this feasible was migrating Formula One's massive library of these decades worth of images, audio and video into the cloud. The AWS Media to Cloud service enabled F1 to transfer 150,000 hours of content from a tape archive into the AWS cloud, indexing and tagging the assets to provide historical insights for race analysis to extract critical race performance statistics and finally make those key race predictions. If you followed the sport closely, you would have heard many players complaining in their team radios before about not being able to get close to the car in front of them, which in F1 lingo translates they are losing grip or downforce, which is caused when one car is racing too closely behind another car with an intention to overtake it. But 
Due to the turbulence generated by the car up front, they tend to slide, lose grip and force them to back off. Which means that even the best drivers in the world cannot overtake the car in front of them due to this downforce loss. So how does cloud tech help in solving this problem? Formula 1 2022 official car was designed keeping this in mind to make the sport even more interesting and generate that much needed wheel to wheel action which I must say can be clearly seen so far. But this is a complex task. You need huge amount of compute resources to run these simulation studies of computational fluid dynamics CFD which provides a virtual environment to study the flow of fluids in this case the air around the F1 car which could be for example polluted due to other cars. And all this can be done without ever having to manufacture a single part using cloud tech. Even the most powerful desktops today have about 64 processing cores, but by using AWS, Formula One engineers now had access to 2,500 AWS cores for every single run, and many of these runs could be done in parallel using AWS Parallel Cluster and a combination of Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 instances including AWS Graviton 2 based C6 GN HPC high performance computing instances. This reduced the average simulation time from 60 hours to 12 hours. Cost reduction of these simulation runs by 30%, that too with super computer level performance. AWS enabled F1 to run more than 5,000 single and even multi-car simulations for that wheel-to-wheel -wheel action over six months, generating about 550 million data points. And these very insights led to FIA come up with design specifications for a next-gen car with only 15% downforce loss at a one car length distance which could have been 50% downforce loss in previous seasons. Formula 1 even tested and verified the new design in a wind tunnel and found that the correlation between simulation data and the actual test data was quite good which gave them further confidence in running these complicated high fidelity engineering design projects in CFD using cloud tech. These specifications were then used by F1 teams to design their individual cars for the current 2022 season. Maybe that is what Mercedes team mean when they say they are looking at the data and trying to pick some low hanging fruits after every race. Also, as budget restraints are increasingly imposed on teams to make the sport more equitable, F1 teams will need to rely more heavily on these simulation studies to test their new cars and subcomponents since they have very less time now but more work to do and less human resources as well. Using cloud tech, they can even improve track layouts. AWS capabilities alongside its own simulation runs is giving F1 the opportunity to also look at the possible impact of race weekend format changes. F1 previously toyed with the idea of reverse grids and anticipated what it could do for racing through its simulation runs before the proposal was thankfully rejected. Now let's talk about what happens during the race. AWS Kinesis, a data streams platform modeled after open source Kafka, enables F1 teams to ingest, buffer, and process streaming data in real time, which can then be used to derive insights in seconds or minutes instead of hours or days. Very crucial for the team if they want to learn from mistakes from their past race and make improvements for the next one. Time is everything. Using Kinesis, data teams can now capture and process key performance metrics for each car during every twist and turn of the Formula 1 circuits. 
Then, by deploying advanced machine learning models via Amazon SageMaker, Formula One can pinpoint how a driver is performing and whether or not drivers have pushed themselves over the limit. Understand their braking performance, which shows how a driver's braking style during a cornering maneuver can deliver an advantage coming out of the corner. Because when done right, braking optimizes a car speed through the phases of cornering and enables the driver to gain a better position on the track. This braking performance stat displays and compares different drivers' braking styles and performance by measuring how closely they approach the apex of a corner before braking. It will also show key performance metrics that lead to how the car and driver perform together when cornering, like top speed on approach, speed decrease through braking, braking power utilized, and immense g-forces drivers undergo while cornering. On a side note, that is why if you look closely, most of the F1 drivers have thick necks. McLaren team also works with Splunk, which specializes in analytics using unstructured data, not in a database type of data. Splunk's Data to Everything platform allows McLaren team, for instance, to capture unstructured data from across its infrastructure, network, and server environments for driving analytics-based decisions and looking at them in a structured way. One more thing that really comes into play when you are using cloud computing is the level of scalability you get, which is what Alpine team points out. Using Azure, they can easily scale up and down their computing resources as required while adding new data streams with ease during the race. These insights can also be shared via media platforms to those ardent fans like you and me who are eager to understand the inner workings of the teams and drivers they are rooting for. Formula One has also selected AWS Elemental Media Services to power its video asset workflows. These let you configure a DVR-like experience for viewers of your live stream, watch videos from onboard cameras, and listen to audio snippets from team radios, which gives fans a more personal experience of the race. But how are they doing it? To create these insights, F1 uses historical race data stored in Amazon Simple Storage Service, Amazon S3, and supplement it with live stream data from F1 race cars and trackside sensors to AWS through Amazon Kinesis. F1 teams are also able to analyze race performance metrics in almost real time by deploying those machine learning models with the improved data from these insights on AWS Lambda, which is a serverless compute service that can run code without the need to deploy or manage servers, a huge time saver. F1 teams, like many other companies out there, also teamed up with Zoom to keep its teams and fans connected to a global experience during these times. So with that, now when you see those tech company logos flashing on driver's cars or car performance metrics you get during the race which are powered by AWS, you exactly know what they are and what role they are playing in F1 Championship. So that's it for now. See you in my next.